Hello everyone hope this video will finds you all in a good health myself Dr Parth and today i will teach you how to describe a specimen grossly in few of the medical school the histopathological specimens will be put in your examination and you will you will be asked to describe a particular specimen at that time most of the students are doing mistake in the form that they will just give the final diagnosis that this is the cirrhosis of liver but actually it is not a logistic approach the examiner want to assess your approach towards to reach up to the diagnosis they need to assess your logistic approach to reach up to the diagnosis so that you have to describe the specimen in a seven point manner you have to tell the provisional diagnosis only in the last because guys the diagnosis will be confirmed only after histopathological microscopic examination with a cross examination you cannot tell 100%ly about the diagnosis so guys while describing the specimen first point you have to tell is that whether you received a whole organ or a part of organ or a slice of organ and you have to identify the particular organ that is the first step you have to tell that this is the whole specimen of kidney or this is a part of lung as you can see in the diagram all right now while describing a specimen a second point is you have to tell about the size of specimen whether the size of organ is increase or decrease so let's see the example in which the size of the organ is increased so the first important example is left ventricular hypertrophy of heart because of hypertension many of the patient have left ventricular hypertrophy their left ventricle is enlarged in size so the overall size of heart will be increased in hypertension induced left ventricular hypertrophy the second example is splenomegaly the spleen enlargement the examples of spleen enlargement are some leukemias like that of chronic myeloid leukemia and malaria like infection so second example of increased size of organ is splenomegaly the third example is left ventricular sorry fatty liver the third example is fatty liver in which because of lipid accumulation in the liver your liver size is increased all right so that was about the increased size of organ now we will see the example of decrease in the size of organ so the organ size can be reduced in variety of pathologies the most common example is chronic kidney disease particularly chronic pyelonephritis or chronic glomerulonephritis or amyloidosis of kidney in the last stage in which the kidney size will be decrease so in the chronic pyelonephritis and the chronic glomerulonephritis your kidney size will be small second example of decrease in the size of organ is cirrhosis of liver in the liver cirrhosis the size of organ is reduced because of the chronic fibrosis the brain size will be reduced in senile atrophy of a brain in case of an atrophy of brain the size of brain can get reduced all right so second point was that of you have to describe the size of specimen third point is that you have to tell about the shape of an organ because the shape can be altered in some of the pathologies for example in the uterine fibroid fibroid is a leiomyoma it's a smooth muscle tumor of uterus in which the shape is altered suppose you have the intramural fibroid in the uterus as you can see in this image if you have the intramural fibroid then the shape of uterus can get change it can be distorted all right now fourth point you have to tell while describing the specimen is that color you have to tell about the color of specimen because for example the first example is fatty liver in which the outer color in which the color of liver can be yellow right second example is 
fibrocavitary lesions that form in the tuberculosis of lung. If you have the tuberculosis of lung, then you will have the caseous necrosis in which you have the TZ appearance and that's why it is called as a caseous necrosis. And ultimately this necrosis in the end stage, you will have the fibrosis in the lung. So grossly the color will be whitish if we have the fibrocavitary lesion in the lung, particularly in the tuberculosis. Sometimes because of calcification in the outer organ, you can have whitish colored structural whitish deposition. And guys, remember that normal color of every organ for the most of the organ is grayish hue. All right. Now fifth point you have to tell while describing the specimen is very important that is the outer surface. A normally outer surface is very smooth for most of the organ. But sometime in the pathology outer surface can be rough because of inflammation. The first example of abnormal outer surface is obviously an cirrhosis of liver in which your outer surface is a nodular. In the liver cirrhosis the liver is getting damaged and you have the chronic fibrosis, you have the regenerative nodules so that your outer surface will be nodular in case of a liver cirrhosis which you can see in this image. The second example of abnormal outer surface is chronic glomerulonephritis of kidney in which your outer surface will be granular and will show the white scale. So the outer surface is granular in case of a chronic glomerulonephritis. All right. The third example of abnormal outer surface is obviously an pneumonia of lung. The pneumonia is a inflammation of lung parenchyma in which your lung will become hard, will become hard like that of liver, which is called as a consolidation. That is because of accumulation of pus. So in the pneumonia of lung, you have the hard lung and the outer surface will be will be white consolidated and the consistency also is a very hard so the outer surface is white in case of an pneumonia of lung all right now fifth example of abnormal outer surface is that of polycystic kidney the polycystic kidney disease guys it's a non cancerous condition in which it is an inherited condition in which you have the multiple cluster of cyst in the kidney so grossly the outer surface is very cystic all right now sixth point is that you have to tell any abnormal pathological area if present in the received organ for example first we will see an example of infarction of kidney in this attached image you can see that guys at the lower pole of kidney you have a whitish wedge shape white is area weight shape white is area so that area is infarction that is a coagulative necrosis you will develop coagulative necrosis because of ischemia because of less of blood supply because of less blood supply in the particular organ you will develop a coagulative necrosis which is known by the name infarction so in this image you can see that you have the abnormal area in the form of wedge shape infarction so this is the example of infarction of kidney. Now second example of abnormal pathological area is in this attached image you can see that you have a exophytic mass in the intestinal lumen. You can see that here you have the rugosity. So obviously it's a small intestine in which you can see that there is a protrusion of cauliflower like mass. right? So that is the pathological area, that abnormal mass suggestive of malignant neoplastic lesion of the intestine. Now malignancy could be in the form of anything, adenocarcinoma, lymphoma, neuroendocrine tumor, gastrointestinal stromal tumor, etc. But it's a definitely malignant lesion of small intestine. So that is the second example of pathological area. Now the third example in this diagram, you can see that in the foot, you have the ulcerative growth, the large white is ulcerative growth and that ulcerative growth is because of squamous cell carcinoma ultimately. 
so this is the malignant ulcerative lesion in the foot that is the third example of abnormal pathological area all right now in this fourth example you can see that you can see the uterus with which you have attached ovary and from the ovary there is a large cyst is arising so this is the specimen here the abnormal pathology is ovarian cyst attached ovarian cyst in the ovary because of presence of uterus and ovary you can see that this is the ovarian cyst the common ovarian cyst are follicular cyst and serous cyst adenoma or mucinous cyst adenoma and this is the example of serous cyst adenoma of ovary all right now guys sixth example of abnormal pathology is here you can see that you have the fetus you have the small fetus with which you have placental tissue and you can see if you observe carefully then you can see that this placental tissue is not normal you have the grape like clusters so it's a example of non viable non viable pregnancy particularly it's a example of hydatiform mold and whenever the fetus is present in the hydatiform mold it's a example of partial mold so this specimen is of partial mold all right now sometime you might just received an worm in your uh, exam in this image you can see that you have the you have the specimen that containing a formalin in which you have the worms particularly it is a ascaris round worm it is commonly seen in the children in the developing countries and it can be transmitted by fecal oral route so this is the example of round worm you can see that you have the very long worm in the container so these long worms are usually due to round worm so guys this is the approach in which way you have to describe a specimen after describing all this point you can give your provisional diagnosis never say in the exam that this is the case of squamous cell carcinoma of foot or this is a adenocarcinoma of intestine never say in that manner you just have to describe the specimen in a logistic approach and then you have to give the final diagnosis so again i am summarizing you have to first tell that this is a jar of this is a jar containing a formalin in which you have the whole organ part of organ or a slice of organ first you have to identify the organ second point is that you have to tell about the size of organ whether the size is increase or reduce third point you have to tell about the shape of organ whether the shape is alter or a normal then you have to tell about the any color change in the specimen is present or not the fifth important point is that you have to describe the outer surface whether the outer surface is smooth or it is a rough granular or nodular sixth point is that you have to tell any pathological area if present in the received specimen and the seventh point is that finally you will you have to give your provisional diagnosis i hope that this video will be helpful for every medical student in their practical examination if you have any doubt then you can ask in the comment section i will surely answer it thank you very much and see you soon with the next video of erythropoiesis thank you very much till then take care